Okay, someone was asking about how do you uh, go about shimming these cranks. Well, I'll give you a little bit of a quickie tutorial on it. Uh, I've already got the crank set up to where all I have to do is sandwich it. Uh, already got my gasket secured and in place where I want it. So I know that's going to be okay. Now, the next step is to dry fit your other half of the case onto the crank and then you need to secure it with a couple of bolts so that you can tell exactly where you're at on your squish But you got to be smarter than the bolt holes to do that. <laughs> okay. There's one. Now we got one on the bottom. Let's get one on the top. That'll give us a good uh, flat seal against the case halves. Okay, it's sandwiched together. Crank still moves nice and easy, as you can see there. Still moves. Now, what we have to find out is if there's any side to side with the new gasket. This one has absolutely zero. Now, if it had slack in there, we would have to. Uh, take some of these you start with one and you take one and you add it to the crankshaft the base of this throw right here before you put the case on uh, and I'm going to go ahead and take the time to open it back up uh, so you can see what I'm talking about. If it had been too tight, even with the new gasket, then you need at least one shim, but you, you don't want any side movement, but yet you want it to roll nice and easy okay there we go come on babe they never cooperate when the camera's running any other time it would just fall off well that side came off but it doesn't matter because you can add it to either side now what you do is you take one only one at a time put it on there solid against the crank then you put the case back together just like I had it and then you see what kind of play you have Or is the side-by-side -side movement of the crank. Uh, we will see. We're going to sandwich this down. Uh, the shim may be too much for this little uh, short rod crank because it was doing pretty good the way it was. But we'll see. Okay, there, it's nice and snug in there. And we still roll okay. Now let's see what we got this away. Ever so slightly of a movement. So, 
it's probably going to be okay if I just left it that way uh, with one. Uh, I can feel the rubbers holding it back because the rubber, the rubber seals are dry. Uh, but other than that, that is how you shim one. And if you still don't like that, then you take it back apart and you add another shim. Now, when there's two shims, it's, it's usually pretty good to put one on each side of the crank. Uh, doesn't really matter if it's an odd number that it comes out. Just uh, the main thing is have zero play this away. Or almost just very minutely a tiny little bit of play you'll probably be okay. And I don't have this one secure all the way around, uh, so that one shim's probably gonna be just fine uh, because I don't have, I mean, it's very, very little. So I'm going to say that that's probably going to be just fine, uh, but it is a little tighter than it was, so I'm probably going to take it back out because we're not done compressing. Uh, but you see how that works. If I had uh, put that one in there and it still moved, then we'd have to break it back apart and add another one of these until we find to where there's almost zero uh, left to right movement in the crank. Once that's done, uh, and you can still reach down here and roll it just fine. Yeah, see that one's even snugger. I, I can't run with that shim. So uh, that gives you an idea of how to do it. You just you just got to have crank shims uh, just in case. Uh, the older cranks probably will require more of those. These newer ones seem to be a lot better about not needing shims. But uh, anyway, that's how you do it, guys. Hopefully this helps a little bit. If not, I guess you'll just have to text me and I'll try to talk you through it. Okay? Bye.